So if you happen to find these documents somewhere, I would really love to know what the strategic plan is for various companies out there. Are they actually saying, how do we build a product that Iran will buy? Or are they saying, how do we build a product that Boeing will buy, and then let's make a buck off of Iran while we're doing it? What's their plan? What are they up to? So if it's the latter, as this woman says, then maybe we can put a divide in there. Maybe we can put a wedge in there so that they make their money off of Boeing and there's no money left to be made off of a rent. Uh, certainly it's not just a technical problem. It's a social problem. It's a political problem. There are governments out there wondering right now, how do we penalize companies that are killing people in other, in other countries? Uh, hard to say. So the question is, is there cryptography in these if, products? Yes, then it's illegal to sell to Iran. If yes, then it's illegal. Illegal to sell to Iran doesn't matter. Like the, the president of Secure Computing said, oh, we don't sell to Iran. We don't do any of that. And there's a picture of him shaking hands with the head firewall guy in Iran. So, but that's a separate discussion for a separate time. OK, so what else are we up against? We'll go through a couple of other uh, topics to think about and then uh, break in a little bit. Uh, so another thing to keep in mind, there are a lot of countries and companies out there. You've all heard of the Yahoo thing before. Uh, Yahoo.cn, there was a fellow in China who was using Yahoo uh, email server and then China went to Yahoo and said, uh, who is this guy we want to know because he's our citizen and we want to make him a better citizen. And <laughs> Yahoo said, why certainly, you are a country and we follow the laws of every country. Here is your citizen. That sucks. So the answer that a lot of companies are having right now is, okay, we're not going to put our data centers in China. We'll put them nearby and then no problem. That works great while China is the only bad country in the world. But China is not the only bad country in the world. So how, do we just keep on moving everything into Iceland? Uh, I'd like a better answer than that. It just got better, now there's Iceland. Just got better, now there's Iceland. Uh, another fun thing to keep in mind, blocking goes both ways. So if China black holes your IP address because you're running a Tor relay, you can't surf Baidu, the Chinese search engine. So if they black hole a Tor relay that's an exit relay, then somebody who wants to reach a Chinese blog through Tor can't get there because it's blocked in both directions. So they are preventing people from reaching that IP address. And that means you can't reach the Chinese blog from Tor either, which is something that I had no idea that was going to happen uh, before I started realizing that, wait a minute, once they blocked the public addresses, then blocking goes in both directions. The other neat part of that is if you run your Tor relay on a dynamic IP address, then slowly all of your neighbors can't reach China which I'm not sure if that was intentional or unintentional or what, but China is eventually going to cut itself off from the rest of the internet if this is really their strategy. Another thing to keep in mind, Tor is only a piece of the puzzle. There are a lot of other pieces that we need to solve if we're going to get this stuff right. One of them, I have to assume that your local computing setup is pretty safe. You don't have spyware installed. You're not in an internet cafe in Beijing where they've got a video camera pointing at you and your screen stuff like that. Another piece of that, there's a lot more than just Tor that people need to learn how to use correctly. I was just talking to a blogger from Vietnam a month or so ago, and he was saying, yeah, I use Yahoo because everybody uses Yahoo. And uh, last week, all of our passwords got changed. What happened? So how do we teach these people about SSL and how to be safe and all the other programs and tools that they need to use well? Um, another example of that, in June, when Jake and I and other people were trying to teach people in Iran how to do things safely, they are like, oh, I have a plain text proxy. It's great. I'm just using it. And we're like, it's a plain text proxy. Anybody who looks at any of your traffic knows every destination. They know your Twitter account. They know your password. They know everything. But they were happy using their plain text proxy. So many of them have learned over the past month or something like that. But it's still a, a challenge there in terms of educating people about general safety. Another question, do you really have the right version of Tor? So if you're in the US or Europe, you know what GPG signatures are. On my business card is my PGP key that signs the Tor source code. You can make sure you've got the right Tor. But what if you're in Burma 
I meet very few people from Burma. How do they know they've got the right tour? There was another horrible example a little while ago of uh, people using Skype in China, where Skype partnered with a company called Tom to produce Tom Skype. And as part of the partnering, as part of the uh, translation part, they made it Chinese version, uh, which had a back door in it, which if you ever said any wrong keywords, then they wrote down everything you said and sent, to, sent it to a central location. So one of my fears eventually is the bad guys are going to start sending out versions of Tor that I didn't write. And the worst case scenario is I get a lot of mail from people in China saying, hey, Roger, torproject.org works again. I can reach it. Now I'm using Tor. And what they've actually done is they mirrored the website. They do a DNS redirect. So when you come from inside China, you get this other website that looks totally like the Tor website, except you're running Tom Tor. So how can we solve that? We've got an email autoresponder now where you mail get tour at torproject.org from your Gmail account, and we send you Tor. That's pretty good. In Iran, they don't use the internet much because people keep turning the knob down. So they're passing things around by USB key or something like that. And hopefully, you get it from a friend who's, uh, who has the right version. OK, so a couple other things to think about. Um, in September, when they blocked all the public relays, we had a couple of choices to make. And we went to our friends in China who are expert about these things, and we got two different answers. The first answer was, hit them in the nose. Show that you're for real. Put out a new version of Tor right now that isn't blocked. And show all the people in China that, that you, you're not going to take this, that you can go head on head with the Chinese government and keep going. And the other version, the other advice we got was, let it pass. It's just China. Bridges still work. Don't, don't fight them. The more you fight them, the more they're going to fight you. And we decided the second approach seemed like a much better strategy, where Tor is useful in a lot of different places. It still works in China. It still works in Iran if you've got a bridge. And the goal is not to make a piece of software that works out of the box no matter what, even if you don't know anybody. The goal is to make a piece of software that once you've got a bridge, then you're in business. And we're changing the idea. A lot of people in China, a lot of bloggers, are currently thinking, my, my program doesn't work. I need to get a new version of the program. And the new idea is, your program's going to work the whole time. You need to get a new bridge. So hopefully that uh, teaches them a little bit more about how you could build these things. Um, OK, so I'm running a little bit low on time. I'll skip a few things. Um, another thing to think about, uh, I think it was February, there was a fellow named Hal Roberts from the Harvard Berkman Center who uh, he was looking through the frequently asked questions list of some of the other circumvention tools out there, the more proprietary ones that don't tell you how they work. And one of the questions he found was, do you sell user data? And the answer was, yes. And the more you pay us, the more precise the data is. And a lot of people freaked out at that, because they're thinking, I'm using this tool, and obviously the tool is keeping me safe. Whereas the people operating the tool are thinking, there are users. We let them reach websites. Of course, we sell their data. How else are we going to stay in business? So a lesson there is a lot of these tools see circumvention and privacy as totally separate things. And our lesson from that is they, they have to be the same thing. If there is a database out there of every YouTube video you've watched from a certain country, if it's the government keeping it, that's bad. If it's the censorship tool, keep, the anti-censorship tool keeping it, that's also bad. So the goal of Tor is to not have any of these bottlenecks. A uh, couple other things to think about. Australia. There are a lot of people all around the world. There are a lot of countries all around the world that are thinking, wouldn't it be great if we censor our internet too? And this is bad for a, a couple of different reasons. One of the big reasons is, Every time a country like Denmark or Germany or Australia or whatever tries to build a list of all the bad websites in the world, they get it wrong. They put too many things on it. They do it in secret. They never have any transparency or anything like that in terms of, of what actually goes on the list. So they end up censoring Republican websites or stuff like that. That's the first problem. The second problem is when governments go to China and they say, stop being a bad country. You're censoring your internet. Only bad countries censor their internet. China has a great answer right now. China's answer is, what? Denmark censors their internet. Australia censors their internet. England censors their internet. Canada censors their internet. New Zealand's working on censoring their internet. Stop picking on me. Everybody does it. We're just 
being safe on the internet.